Romeo Beckham, like mother, like son, or maybe like father, like son. David and Victoria have both rushed to praise the 18-year-old model who's done his first ever magazine cover shoot. Posing for Luomo Vogue, that's uh, Italian for men, I think, uh, with many people saying he looks like the perfect mix of both his mum and dad. So, Jana, is he the best of both? Well, isn't it a lot easier if your mum and your dad are really, really well known and both your mum and your dad have themselves been on the covers of thousands of magazines around the world? And I imagine that watching this programme, there are plenty of uh, young men uh, his age who would like to be on the cover of a magazine. In fact, they'd like any decent job going, but they've got to start from scratch. And I just think the people, uh, the kids of famous people have it easy because they've got the doors already open. But he is, uh, he, I mean, he, to me, he looks, he is a model looks, if, they, if there is such a thing. You know, I mean, he does look very at home there on the magazine you cover. You can't tell me they didn't put him on the cover because he's just any old Joe. He's on the cover because of who his parents are. And in fact, there was a Burberry ad a few years ago with or everyone in the ad was children of famous people. And I just think, yeah, there'll be plenty of boys his age around the world who look just as good as he did, but advertisers want that famous connection. Do you think that, Brenda? Um, I, I think that it's, you know, it's very easy for people to say, oh, cos his mum and dad is famous and, and this, that, but... It's hard work, I think, to be able to, to do something like that. It's not something that's, that's so easy. So you've got to give him credit for actually doing that and being successful. Yes, you can go to it, but you could be crap or rubbish at, at doing it. So I just think it's more important to support your children and just make sure that you're not trying to live your, your life through them. But your son's really, really successful. Well, he's seen me working hard yeah. and it was my hard work ethic. Yeah. But he said, you know, I've seen you work hard and, and then you, I want to just try and succeed for myself. And I support, I support that. But, you know, it's got to... It's, I think... Everybody loves to, to slate and put down people, kids from, from celebrity parents and things, but, you know, I think you should just give the children a bit more credit than, yeah. than what some of them are getting. Carl, where do you stand on this? Well, I think the problem is, is that um, you have to remember as well that children from celebrity parents who are just equally, if not more talented, in, in some cases, that they can't win either way because if they become successful, people go, it's because of who your parents were. You know, um, all the success that my son Jake has had, for instance, has had absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, he's done it all on his own. <laughs> he's behind you. <laughs> he's behind oh you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get this moment on the <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's just done that. But anyway, but he does. He works really hard on his own. And also, why is it always children of celebrity parents? You know, if I was in charge, if I was the CEO of a massive company yeah. and my son or daughter was showing interest to be in that company, of course, if I could give them a leg up, I would. But once I've given them the leg up, they have to have the talent to prove that they can carry on doing it. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think it's really unfair. It's always, always about, oh, celebrity this and celebrity that. I think it happens right across the board of any business. Yeah, I think that, I think you're right there. I mean, nepotism does happen. If you, if you run, like, a plumbing firm or your mate runs a plumbing firm, you might get your son an apprenticeship. Do you not exactly. think that, Janet, that... It's fair. My memories of my relationship with my mother when I was trying to uh, get my career going in journalism, uh, number one, when I got a job on the Daily Mail uh, and I was so proud of getting this job, I rang home and told my dad and he more or less put the phone down and said he was embarrassed and disgusted because he didn't read that newspaper. And he, you know, his political persuasions lay elsewhere. So support from mum and dad, zero at that stage because... Uh, they weren't interested in, in, in my career. But do you not think it could be, as Colleen said, in a way, it can sometimes be a hindrance, i.e. if you are actually very good at something, people might look at your surname and go, oh, well, because your dad is a, a film director, you've just got your breaks because of that. Yeah, maybe. Well, I think what I try, I try to work out um, 
what I inherited from my parents, and I just think I inherited a work ethic and there was no way they could help me. But the minute that I started being on telly, I remember my mother ringing me up and saying, can you open the fate uh, near where she lived in Perryvale? And I said, why? And she went, oh, the butcher has promised me a month of free meat <laughs> if you open the so, talk about turning the tables. But speaking of turning the tables, I find myself... I'm quite inspired by what my children do and, and, you know, they have such a positive mental attitude and outlook and it's a totally different outlook to mine and yeah. I, I try to hold on to that and harness that mm. and learn from that myself. Yeah. So, I think the, the learning and the teaching, it, it works both ways. I think the key thing here it always is just work ethic, as we've all said. If you yeah. have that work ethic, then yeah. you can kind of get on and, and be good at whatever you do.